Right. So, <clears throat> so we're looking at uh, Psalm 32, verse 8, and the Lord is saying, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. And uh, it seems like it's with the you know, the I will of God and saying, Lord is saying, you know, I will do this. I will instruct and I will teach and I will guide. So that's a great promise reassurance for us. Um, in the same way, you know, the same uh, thought, he's saying, you know, do not be like this, you know, because I will be like this, but you do not be like this. And the Lord is saying, you know, don't be like the mule, don't be like the horse, um, which is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's going to be tough to bring them, you know, unless I put a, um, you know, harness, unless I put a, a bit and bridle, you know, we're not going to be able to control them. And uh, that must be, they must be, you know, kind of led or by force um, with that bit and bridle. So with, with the bit and bridle, you can control them. So they don't be like that. Like, don't be like that. You come of your own free will. You come of your own choice. Uh, and this is what I will, I want to do. You know, I will instruct, I will teach, and I will guide. Right. So uh, it's it's really wonderful that the Lord of heaven and earth, His desire or His will, is that for for us to be taught by Him, for us to be instructed by Him, for us to be guided by Him. Please look at that. Uh, the last part of that verse eight. It says, "I will guide you with my eye." So this teaching and instruction and specifically this guidance is from a place of intimacy, you know, from a place of closeness. Um, he's saying, I will guide you with my eye, meaning, you know, normally uh, um, if you if you want guidance from someone uh, who's someone is guiding you through their eye, you know, saying uh, through a gesture or through an expression, uh, you need to be able to look at them, observe them closely, and, uh, you know, uh, have a clear vision of their expressions. So the Lord is inviting us to that place of closeness and intimacy, and he's saying, you know, I want to be that. I actually want to do that, right? So this is something which is something very re reassuring, right? And uh, th that the Lord would invite us to that place and sometimes we struggle, you know, what is it, God? What do you want me to do? Uh, but the Lord is saying, and I, I, this is my heart's desire to teach, to instruct, to guide, right? So let's pray and then just open up our hearts and say, Lord, you know, you teach, you instruct, you guide. You know, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm, I surrender and I want to come to that place of receiving from you, right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you that, um, Lord, for these words, Lord. Uh, for revealing your heart, Lord, when it comes to instruction, teaching, guidance, for revealing your heart, Lord. And uh, it just fills us with so much hope and uh, so much reassurance and faith, oh God. It just dispels all fear of, um, Lord, um, lack of clarity. It just, Lord, dispels all fear and um, knowing that it is your will, your desire to teach and instruct and guide. And Lord, I, we thank you that you're inviting us to this and you're saying that you want to do this from a place of intimacy, from a place of intimacy, God. And so, God, we thank you. We, we receive this invitation, Lord, when we respond to that invitation, God. And we want to thank you for this invitation. Continue to speak to us. Continue to lead us, Lord. And may we grow in this aspect of receiving teaching, receiving instruction, and receiving guidance, God, and acting on them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. OK, so I hope your week's been good. Um, scripture reference, Rosalind. OK, Psalm 32 and verse 8. Yeah. So how's the week been? Good, bad, ugly, <laughs> busy. Yeah, I know. Busy, right? So today uh, we'll continue um, from where we. Uh, Shubhashish says good. Uh, nice to see you, Shubhashish. And uh, Lubega, praise God. Okay. So Zelitoli is also there. Um, okay.
Okay, so let's uh, let's look at we, we've been looking at um, life skills, and um, I think last class we looked at um, we stopped by you know uh, stopped with this thing uh, this chapter on personal planning and planning for our development. Right? See, I'm sure all of us or all of you have planned and executed your plan to be doing this course, right? To be here. To some extent, uh, to some extent, extent, right? So you plan and you said, okay, this is how it is going to work out. I'm going to set aside so many years, um, and I'm going to do this. I don't know whether you consciously thought of it or not, or just went to the flow. Uh, but you know, really, um, you did consciously, or you know, uh, otherwise, you kind of planned some things. Right? So. So how how will it be if we can plan our personal development? You know, saying that, okay, uh, for this ministry to minister at this level, or this work, or this business, or for this profession that I'm in, um, to keep moving upward or to progress in what I'm doing, to get better at what I'm doing, um, to do things effectively, right? So that there can be better results, there can be fruitfulness. Now. How can that happen? Okay, so it can happen in two ways. You know, we just go with it, and whatever happens, happens, right? And uh, if it's good, okay, we struggle. Uh, I mean, some if there's a challenge, we struggle. We there are problems we see, and then we, you know, at that time we begin to see for options, look for options, look for solutions, and we try and overcome. Or it could be that we we plan and say. Um, this is what you know where we want to be. So when we are planning, uh, so first of all, uh, you know, some basic question: Is it good to plan or not? Doesn't it seem unscriptural, unspiritual? You know, not unscriptural. Doesn't it seem unspiritual to plan? You know, no. Um, we see that God is a God of plan. He says, "My counsel stands forever." Right, so uh, God is a God who gives thought to what He's doing, and says, uh, you know, Jeremiah twenty-three, um, I think, yeah, Jeremiah twenty-nine, eleven, right, where He says, "My thoughts, the plans that I have for you are good plans," right. So, which means that um, He has planned certain things for us, right. Um, we look at, um, I think it's Ephesians. Um, let's read that verse. Ephesians chapter, um, you, you, you know which verse I'm going to write, Ephesians chapter 2 and um, verse 10, right? Ephesians 2 and verse 10. It says, um, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay? Good works, good deeds. Good things that God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, or we should live them out, or we should encounter them and walk in them. So, what has He done? He has prepared beforehand. What is planning? It's exactly that. That you prepare beforehand. You give thought beforehand. You, when we give thought, when we set aside time, when we set aside resources, um, and when we do that beforehand. You know, how do you plan for something? Plan for a, for a maybe having some guests over. You invite them for a for a dinner or a meal. You plan. You think beforehand and say, okay, ten people are coming, so this is what I need to plan. We, we, it needs ten plates at least. <laughs> it needs ten, you know, glasses. It needs. You know all these things. These are the dishes. So you're thinking beforehand. So that's it. So it's it's something that we do normally, and um, so that is what it is. So when, when it comes to our life, uh, our our maybe the ministry that God has called us to, the things that God has called us to do, um, to plan, to think beforehand, and to plan, prepare beforehand, is not unspiritual, right? Um, and uh, we need to do that. And when we need, when we do that, we come to a place of knowing what we are going for, 
right? And uh, there's a lot of things that happen because of that. You know, there's motivation, there's inspiration, there's direction, and a lot of it we studied in our um, you know Christian leadership class, right? We we looked at we looked at that um, all those aspects. Um, so uh, Christian leadership. We've we've done it already. I'm just suddenly, yeah. Okay, so let's look at. Um, let me just share the screen. Um, okay. So. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's look at um, you know uh, what are these um, elements of a personal plan. I hope it's clear. Um, just one second, please. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, so a clear vision of the where we want to go, which means what do we want to achieve, and why do we do that? You know, the thing is, the why is very important because the reason for, you know, doing ministry, the reason for, um, you know, doing business, the reason for working at a certain place, the why is important. Okay, uh, and then the what will follow. The what will actually gain momentum. Uh, the the what will actually, uh, you know, have a lot of focus. When we are clear about why we are doing it, the intention, right? So, so that, that's the thing. So, if you're having clarity with regard to why, and and how do we get clarity about the why? Anybody? Why we want to do something? You know, how do we get clarity on that? Um, how do you think? Why, why, why are you doing this course, right? Why are you studying this subject? So, how do you, yeah, someone? Passion, yep. desire, burden. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Passion for that uh, particular uh, Passion. Or... Passion for that particular field, is it? OK. So you seem to have a. Passion meaning uh, a burning desire. Okay, this is what I want to do, right? And uh, so I'm I'm doing it. This is what I want to do. Um, every morning you get up, and this is this is what it is. This is what you live for, right? And uh, this is this is a de desire there. So, yeah. So Shubhra is saying purpose, vision. Yeah. So all that goes into the why. So clear clarity about the vision. So, so the, the Bible in, in, in the Word of God declares that people perish for lack of vision or lack of knowledge. People perish because there is where there is no vision, people perish. So, what does it talk about? It talks about the big picture. It talks about the why. Why am I here? So, when we lose the sense of why, there is no hope. There is no hope. You know, people. People come to a place saying, "Why am I here? Why am I even here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, I've seen there all that is to see. I've experienced all that is experienced. You know, why am I even here?" People lose uh, a sense of hope and direction, and and that can be disastrous, right? But praise God, that God can God gives us that desire. You know, there's a sense of purpose, and. Um, uh, even though we might not have clarity, you know, in different stages of life, different seasons of life, even though we may not full have full details, full clarity, but God gives us that sense of uh, vision and purpose. Okay, so a clear sense when it comes to our personal planning. So a vision is very, very important. The why is very important. Okay, so from that comes the what. Okay, so what am I doing? You know, this is what I want to do. Um, this is why I'm doing it, and this is what I want to do. So in that. A good sense of the uh, skills that are required, abilities that are required, in order to do that. What 
Okay, so maybe God is calling you to be a missionary in uh, uh, to a particular nation or maybe to a particular state, and um, then you realize that if I need to communicate, if I need to be in that region, then I need to know the language, right? I need to know the language in order to communicate. I've got this why, I've got the what, um, but I need some skills, I need some abilities in order to communicate, you know? So um, we read about William Carey. William Carey, um, you know, he, he was an apprentice for the shoemaker. And during his free time, he um, he learned the scriptures. He also, you know, when he came to India, he learned the language. He learned that skill. He realized that, uh, well, he had a gift for languages, or, and but he, you know, engaged a tutor to in order to learn the languages, in order to you know translate and learn the languages, and uh, so that he could, you know, he did a great job of translating the Bible into so many Indian languages. Right? So the thing is, one needs to learn that skill. So you know, some of these questions that are on the screen, you know, uh, do you need certain skills in order to get a particular job, or in the job, or you know, we are using job. It could be professional. It could be uh, you know the career, or it could be ministry, right? What are those skills that are required? Um, maybe if it's a language skill, maybe it's um, something to do with finances, maybe it's something to, you know, what is it that is required? So identify that, right? So from the why and the what, to in order to carry out that what, do I need certain skills? Now, the, you know, this, this whole um, uh, understanding of the skills I need, uh, it could come from a place where I've not gone there yet, Right? I need to do this, therefore, I need these skills. Or it could come as a problem. Right? We, it is a problem. Now, I'm not able to solve this. And to solve this problem, I need these, I need these skills. I need this ability. So the problem actually points us to, or is an indicator of certain skills, maybe things that we want to solve, things that, that are challenging to us, and it really tests us, and we are unable to get past that. That That is an indication that I need a next level of skills, right? Another level of uh, expertise or ability in order to, you know, in order to navigate this, in order to clear this and keep going. So, um, so that's another thing. So, uh, you know, and people, you know, if you're on a you know, in a particular profession, well, people could say you would you have an appraisal, and from you know maybe you have an annual appraisal or a you know appraisal every six months, and then the manager could say, you know what, um, you this these are good things that you're doing, and these are some things that are challenging for you. You're not, you're not able to get past that, and you need to upgrade your skills, right? And and the word they use is upskill. You need to scale up your skills um, in order to you know, learn some things, learn some software, learn some abilities, learn some things. You need to upskill. So uh, once you do that, you realize that you're able to go past it. Use that skill, use that ability. Right. So to have a clearer vision, to have clear uh, understanding of what skills are required. Right. So all this is all this goes towards planning for our personal development. Okay, so we see we saw that planning is good. Planning is not unscriptural. Uh, it's not unspiritual, so we can do that. Okay, okay. So clear idea of also what standard I need to achieve. Okay, so it talks about the the bigness of the task. Also talks uh, talks about the uh, the excellence level of that. Okay, so what standard is is required in order to uh, reach that? You know, what, what what standard? What level as am I in right now? And what level is required? Okay, I'm able to maybe, maybe it's a, it's an instrument, and you're saying, okay, I'm playing. I'm able to play at that this level, you know, for myself uh, individually, maybe for a small group. But if I need to play at a higher level with other musicians who are also skilled, then I need to make some changes to the way I play. Right. Uh, I need to make some changes. Similarly, in terms of ministry, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe you're saying, okay, God, um, you know, place me here, two or three people, 
uh, you know, I'm sitting and I'm sharing scripture, I'm learning, we're all learning together. But if it's going to be another, uh, you know, if you're going to increase my re realm of influence and, and take me to certain groups of people with certain levels of expertise and expectation, God, what is it that I need to have? What is it that I need to know? Right, so, uh, so to minister at that level, okay. Then, um, then also priority, right? So we cannot do everything all at once. I think, like we start, like we looked at last class, we need to learn to prioritize. What is it that I can do now? What is it that I can invest in right now in my season of life? Okay, I, maybe you have a job, you have a family, and uh, you have twenty four hours only, right? So, how within this? What can I prioritize right now? And what is it that I can do later? OK, very important. And uh, and a detailed, again, idea of where we are right now for each of these skills. Take it one step at a time. OK. Um, so this, we see that it's a, it's a continuous thing. It happens something that happens throughout our lives. Okay. So we see that it's important to set um, certain achievable goals okay, when it comes to personal development achievable goals personal goals so to see what are what are those areas and what are those goals that i can actually you know set for myself okay so look here's something to help us okay academically what are some goals okay in terms of career what are some goals in terms of finances, what are some goals? Okay, what is it that I can see when, when we look at these goals? You know, we say, "Hey, you're you're talking all worldly, worldly ways, right? Um, academics and career and uh, money and and all these things. This, this all seems very very worldly, right? But the thing is, this it's it will seem worldly when we are not involving God." involving the Lord, we're not inviting the Lord into it, it will definitely seem worldly. Okay. See, if you're looking, if you're in the, if you're called to be a marketplace working professional, you know, that is your call. God wants you to be a influencer. God wants you to be an influence in that place. Okay. Now, you know, it will require these things. It will require some academics. It will require some uh, you know, career path, right? It will require all this. So, to have goals in order to achieve is is not something that is unbiblical, right? It it will require this. So maybe we can, if you're in ministry, you can change it. You know, say, okay, what is the knowledge of the word? Maybe academic goals can be that. You know, what is it that I need to, uh, maybe a course or maybe uh, something that I need to learn this year? You know, what is it that I can invest in? You know, what what do I need to do? So, you know, rephrase it that way. Okay. Career. Maybe, you know, you, you're looking at ministry and, uh, you know, as a pastor, as a teacher, as someone, you know, um, so you don't have to, you know, call it career. But your calling, in terms of calling, in terms of ministry, what are certain things? What are certain dreams that God has put in your heart? You know, not, does that sit better? Right? <laughs> Able to receive that? Okay. So we can say, okay, Lord, what is it? What is? What are the dreams? You know, what is it that you want me to do? You know, what is it that? Where do you want me to serve? And you know, um, what next, Lord? Where do you want to go? And 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 the thing is, like if you if you look at uh, you know the the missionary journeys, they they did it was it was very ambitious. You know, you think of those times. We think of um, you know the, the missionary journeys of Paul and Silas and Barnabas later and, and Barnabas earlier and Silas later. And we see that you know these were very, uh, I mean, radical things which they did at those times, and also something which was dangerous. And, and it was it took their life in the sense uh, it took a fair amount of their time you know uh, like Paul spent some 18 months uh, in a in Ephesus I think right in 18 months there just think about it you're going and spending 18 months and you're not getting back home you're spending 18 months there teaching investing um, establishing something and moving on so well 
you need to uh, you know you know to think and in, in pray and involve God and and that is what they did even before they started the missionary journey right so they asked they heard from God and then they right? and and definitely it will require finances it will require so monetary goals could be you know are really our prayer uh, it can be a prayer journey it can be a prayer request it can be a prayer need right uh, taken before God so similarly you know all these goals that can um, you know that can actually help us and having goals is important because only then can we know whether we have hit it or missed it right so if we you know it's happened right we, we can talk about it you know uh, oh this this year we really want to achieve this or oh, this year we really want to get somewhere this year maybe we want to go as a family we want to have a vacation we can we can talk about this all day long and then the year comes and goes and then at the next year beginning of next year we can be talking you know we never went anywhere we never did that so all we did was we wished that we could do something we we talked about it but there was no specific goal so a goal would have some focus right so saying that um you know i i want to be in better shape physically i want to be healthier this year that's not a goal right a goal would be very very specific it will be time bound like it will it will be broken down to you know further sub goals it will be like uh, i'm i'm going to eat this i'm going to avoid eating this in every meal i'm going to have my meal in a timely manner meals in a timely manner right so it will go into the details right i'm going to um, eat more vegetables or include more vegetables in my diet right? um so things like that right so we see that what would really i mean i'm i'm sure you know this that this acronym smart which means that um, you know each each of these letters have a you know have something in them so uh, smart first would be specific so make the goal specific uh, make it measurable you know specific in the sense of uh, not saying that i want to be um, i want to be more knowledgeable but specific in what okay uh, i want to learn more okay but in what okay so saying okay maybe this topic this subject and um, your or this book right you're making it specific so it's not something vague it's very specific and it's something measurable which means that you know you're saying that okay in one year's time i want to be this specific now in half a year Uh, or halfway into the year can we actually measure and see where we have reached right so the goal needs to be measurable it, it needs to be you need to have some parameters saying okay um can i measure not only specific but it needs to be measurable so maybe from you know one month into the year two months into the year three months into the year i'm able to review this and see where have i reached okay so that's the goal it it needs to be specific um so that it can help us in progress towards achieving that goal okay attainable it needs to be attainable okay so we've got a time frame we've got specifics we've got something measurable so it needs to be attainable you know so to uh, attainable comes takes into consideration the season of life that you are in uh what god has called you to do you know what is your calling what is what season of life you are in like for example suppose suddenly now i decide to become an airline pilot okay now just consider the season of life your qualification your life experience the way god has been moving leading and suddenly if you if you want to shift everything and say it's going to take some time and it's going to it's going to reorder your life completely there's going to be a change it's going to disrupt completely so is it attainable you know i want to be the president of this nation i want to be the prime minister it's a good thought 
right? But you you look at your the way the Lord has been leading you, the way the Lord has been guiding you. The, the, what is the season of life that you are in? Okay, in order to consider that, and and then say, okay, hey, if, if, is it attainable? Okay, if it's attainable, just go for it. You know, it needs to be attainable. Okay, then relevant, meaning. Are these sub goals, you know, are they relevant in the sense, are they leading to that main thing, to the main picture, the big picture, the vision, right? Um, because if it's if it's not relevant, if it's going to pull in a different direction and are not really going to help me navigate that and reach that um, that big picture of the vision, then it's not a relevant goal, right? It could be a goal that is specific, measurable, you know, all that. Um, uh, attainable even, but it's not relevant. It's not linked to it, and it's because our goal, when we when we pursue a goal, it's going to take time. When you pursue a goal, it's going to take resources, right? In your time is a resource. Um, you're going to set aside some resource, maybe financially to, you know, go after it. So is it relevant? You ask yourself. Only you can answer that, right? Is it relevance? And also. Um, set a you know set a time time box these goals. Let it not be forever and ever. Say, okay, uh, when are you going to achieve this? I don't know. I'll see. I'll see how long it takes. You know that then we will never achieve that, right? So if we are allergic to deadlines, you know, uh, and say uh, maybe some of us who have been, you know, in sales. And deadlines, and we're saying, oh, I, oh, I've had enough. I've I've had enough of deadlines. I've had enough of these monthly things. At the end of it, there's a review, and and whether you've reached, not reached, etc. I've had enough of this. But the fact is, they are helpful, right? Maybe we had bad experiences with it, but they're helpful in um, when we have a when we put a time frame to it. Um, then we will actually go towards it, pursue, achieve that goal. Okay. So yeah, so that's about goals. And so if the goal doesn't, um, I think it was Rosalind who said, you know, it's something that you're passionate about. If it, if it not give, if it, if it not, uh, you know, if it's it's not something that that you're passionate about, passionate about. If it's not something that is, um, you know, that that excites you uh, to talk about it, to pursue it, then maybe you need to review it. Right, review it and see what is it. Where is the passion gone? You know, why is it gone? Right, why is it? It it need not be because the goal is wrong. Right, it could be because of discouragement. It could be because of you know even sin in our lives. Right, because the Bible talks about how fleshly uh, lusts war against the soul. We don't realize it. Right, maybe it's a fleshly lust. Maybe indulging. Over and over again. Now that is producing war, or it's in conflict against our soul, you know, against the renewed mind. So it's slowly breaking things off, dismantling the dream, bringing in, uh, you know, and discouragement creeps in, fear creeps in, and all these things creep in, and suddenly we realized that we don't have a passion. You know, um, the, the psalmist says, you know, restore to me the joy of salvation. He says, restore unto me, God, the joy of salvation, right? So the joy of pursuing the goal, you know, when there's a joy, when there's passion, like, you know, we see in the, the lives of the disciples, they, they did impossible things, right? Like, why should Paul just get up on that ship, get into that and spend money and go and at the risk of maybe even losing his life, and go to another nation and talk about Jesus and establish, teach their people, and and maybe there are, you know, he's just being rejected and people are not applauding, approving, and you know, see, why should he do that? What caused him to do that? It's that passion. He says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I realize that it is the power of God for salvation." And this is something that is required. You know, Romans chapter 1, verse 15, he says, this is it. So maybe we just need to review our life goals. You know, at that time, we were excited, but now it's not. So it, it need not be a wrong goal. right? It can be something that is stealing the passion. It's, you know, it's like a slow leak. It's like a puncture. 
right? Which is taking the life out of that particular goal. So, yeah. So the thing is to review our goals. We can do that. And is it relevant? Am I on track? And all that. So uh, goals, uh, you know, so review it and see, you know, is it in, on track? What is happening? Why am I losing passion? Maybe it's a wrong goal. You know, maybe it's a wrong goal. It could be. So we, we need to kind of discard it, right? OK, so um, so just, just for us to uh, you know, to encourage us to get into that uh, whole thing of planning, like personal planning. Uh, and it's it's good to do that. It's good to have these goals. It's good to have, um, uh, you know, uh, personal goals and, uh, and go goals that we saw, you know, with regard to studies, with regard to work, with regard to maybe um, you know, various other things, right? We can, we can have that. Any questions or any thoughts here uh, that you want to add? Uh, what has been your experience with, uh, you know, with planning and working out the plan? Um, yeah. Anything that you want to share? Um, anyone? Yeah, I'm just going to share uh, something that we saw earlier. Um, yeah, just one second, please. Um, okay. Okay, this is something that we looked at, right, in our Christian leadership. So, how to work on a life plan. Um, just wanted to refresh our memory, right? So you have this. Okay. So what stage of life are we in? You know, what is the plan to go to the next level? And what are some things that, you know, these are these pursuits are, you know, different categories, um, maybe spiritually, personally, family wise, finances, um, you know, and then you have these goals, right? So the thing is to involve God or really depend on God. I'm mean, not just involving, but, you know, depending on God. Like Proverbs 16, 3, right? It says, um, commit your works to the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. So we commit. We commit to him, surrender to him and say, Lord, I'm in this season of life. And okay, maybe we did not do much or maybe we accomplished a lot of things, you know, whatever be the case, to say, God, you know, this is the season, this is a stage of life. And so, you know, this is what I need to do in order to go to the next level in all these areas, right? Spiritual life. Okay, I've been spending so much time, uh, or I've not been spending time, so I need to do that. And then you have a goal saying, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. Okay, right. So I, I think you can um, maybe you you can go back to this table. Um, you can go back to these notes, use it as a ready reckoner, and uh, take a look at that. Right? Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to know uh, what's your experience been in planning, working out your plan? Any would anybody like to share? Um, um, what are some challenges that you'd faced while putting together the plan? Um, yeah. Oh, Jelena, yes. If I mute my mic, OK. Yeah, so I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, so one of the challenge that I face in planning is sometimes we just forget it getting along with life. Like we made a plan and we thought this is what we're going to do. This is how things are going to happen. But then uh, there comes a point in like maybe a shift. Uh, like it could be an educational shift or a shift in a place or something different might have happened in your life, which is unexpected. 
and then suddenly you just forget all the plans now because now you are focusing on your education and uh, but then i have uh, i'm trying and i'm still learning to fix my eyes upon the plans and the goals and the purposes uh, as much as i can uh, helping me to remember it again and again okay this is what i have to do yeah so um yeah so i think that's that, that happens to the, all of us in the sense we have the plan now the plan we know is not going to be watertight in the sense you know there are changes life happens there are challenges difficulties and these shifts and uh, maybe it's you know certain disruptions happen right um, and to the plan and then and then there's a work around right we maybe we lose time in the process we lose energy and then we lose focus and um, but the thing is like you know as we pursue god god reminds us god reminds us uh, of the desires that he put in his heart put in our heart he brings us back to certain things you know maybe certain disruptions are for the good right for the better in the sense that uh, maybe that's not really uh, you know taking us where we need to go like so there are certain disruptions certain things certain changes that happen maybe they are for our good but but the fact is that um, yeah whatever causes these you know these diversions these distractions these are you know these are literally the these are literally the killers you know that um, uh, distractions discouragements um and and certain things that really take us away you know we, we lose time in the process and so on right our detours so um so that's uh, understanding that yes this is this can happen and this has happened but i i'm making that i'm going back whatever it is i'm going back right um so so one of the things we need to understand is our God is a redeemer, right? He's a redeemer, which means he's he's the best at doing that. He redeems us from where we where we are, where maybe where we have we are veered off the track. He brings us back, and when he redeems us, brings us back, it's higher, further than when we actually went off. That's a beautiful thing, right? So. He brings us back. He establishes, and he takes us, takes us further and higher uh, from the place where we, you know, stepped out. So, so that's the beautiful thing. Uh, is it going to take some effort? Yes. You know, rebuilding is always difficult than building, right? So we have to clear out that certain things that some old stones are there, old stuff is there. So rebuilding is always, you know, kind of difficult, but it is possible and it can be. It is done, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. So how do we actually balance our plans and God's timing? Okay. So the plans uh, involve, um, so when we, let's say we, when we looked at plans, we said, uh, you know, it needs to be specific, measurable, etc. So that, that aspect of time, if you're saying, okay, God, I want to do this in one year or two years or whatever, or I want to be here, or I want to be this uh, in this uh, time frame. Good. You know that's good. Um, well, it so happens that maybe the maybe it, it happens in a short while. Maybe it happens in a. You know, it takes double that amount of time. Um, so we realize, you know, when we plan, we, we you know we are going with a lot of um, you know, certain things are known, certain things are not known, right? We are so there are known factors. Okay, this is what and we talked about skill abilities. We're saying, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm I and I want to go there, but then these are some things that are known, and the thing is, there are several things that are unknown, unknown to us, known to God, right? So, um, like God works in seasons, we know that, and there is a, you know, the the season of uh, equipping, commissioning, the season of life that we are in. God knows, and so God's timing is around that. Okay, so now when we say we balance our plans, we we go with. Uh, we go depending on God, depending on um, Him to lead and guide, which includes, you know, His 
his plan, I mean, his timing, etc. Now, I can stretch that, but because of my lack of cooperation, I can do that. Right? In my execution of the plan, I can stretch that time frame, or I can even shorten the time frame by cooperating by obeying. Right. So, so that is that is what it is when it comes to, let's say, balancing. Uh, I don't know if we can use that balance, you know, but but really, it's um, uh, it's being aware of and moving with God's uh, timings, right? Whether it's a shortening of something, or whether it's even, you know, extending of something because of certain things need to be in place, right? Uh, and we know that, knowing fully well that God's understanding of the future and God's, um, you know, God being with us in the journey. You know that's the very reassuring part, right? So we can we can trust and we can actually uh, go with um, go with it. Right? Okay. So we'll stop here, and then we'll meet again uh, next class. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye.